Cancer starts in the mitochondria and it starts with this state of cellular imbalance called oxidative stress. Are the worst thing that kills us. Getting them out of your diet is the most important thing that you can do to make yourself almost cancer proof. Dr. Kate Shanahan, a family doctor and biochemist, says the real enemy behind today's health crisis isn't sugar, it's toxic oils hiding in almost everything we eat. These invisible oils quietly inflame our bodies, disrupt our metabolism, and may even set the stage for serious diseases like cancer. After years of studying traditional diets around the world, Dr. Shanahan uncovered what she calls the hateful eight, eight industrial seed oils that she believes are slowly poisoning our health from the inside out. But don't worry, there's a way out. In this video, we'll reveal what these eight oils are, how they damage the body, and most importantly, the nourishing, natural fats Dr. Shanahan recommends to help your body heal and thrive for a healthy long life. 80 to 90% of the inflammation and inflammatory problems people are suffering from is coming from these seed oils that were never in our food supply until we invented the factory processes for doing these. They were released into the food supply without any studies showing that they were safe. The worst irony here is that the American Heart Association got money from a company selling one of the seed oils. So they actually decided to declare it as heart healthy. So mm. that's why these things have gotten a pass for so long because, and no one's really been talking about them or paying attention to them because we have been misled into believing that not only are they not toxic, they're actually the thing to go for. And that we've been misled into believing that these things are what we should eat instead of traditional fats like butter. And we've made lard a dirty word, literally, because of the American Heart Association and its relationship with these companies that gave them money to say seed oils were healthy. They should not have been released into the food supply without studies to first show that they were safe. And now what's happened is that we're all eating them. We're getting 80% of your fat calories from these seed oils, 80 to 90% of the chronic diseases that I see every day when I see patients are related to inflammation, which comes primarily from all these seed oils. When you get them out of your diet, this is really the gift that keeps on giving. So what exactly are these eight oils that Dr. Shanahan says are silently inflaming our bodies? She calls them the hateful eight. I call them the hateful eight. So how could vegetable oil be bad? Well, these oils have nothing to do with vegetables. The hateful eight vegetable oils are the ones that I've defined based on their processing and their chemistry as the ones that we need to avoid. And the other ones are nowhere near as bad as these. So they are three C's, corn, canola, cotton seed, three S's, soy, sunflower, safflower, and then rice bran and grape seed. Now the first six, the three C's and the three S's are the ones that I ask people to memorize because those are in 95% of the products with an ingredients list that you buy in the typical grocery store. Even if you shop at fancy grocery stores, the upscale ones. The other two, rice bran and grapeseed, those are mostly going to be in kind of fancier restaurants because they're promoted, they're more expensive and they're promoted as healthy, but they're not healthy. Soybeans have been used for th thousands of years, but not soy oil. Sunflower has been used for thousands of years, but not the industrial process of creating sunflower oil. And so it's really the, the detail that is the difference is these seeds are treated like, like badly. Again, after World War II, a lot of things changed. The farmers had to fatten their cows real quick to satisfy the American hunger for beef. Instead of having the cows just fatten themselves up normally on grass, which takes a lot longer, they sped up the process by feeding them corn and soy meal. So they mined that protein out of the soybean and they mined the starch out of the corn and combined the two to create cow feed. And on the other end of the spectrum, what they do with the oil? Well, they fed that to humans. How are these oils made that make them so tough? toxic to our body. In order to produce enough oil at scale, they use extreme heat and pressure. Often they use a solvent. If they want to call it organic, they can't use a solvent. But getting organic soy oil hard does not solve the problem here. So whether they use a solvent or not, the, what they call the crude oil initially extracted from soybeans with the heat pressure and so on in this industrial process, that crude oil contains all kinds of what the industry calls impurities. But when I asked, so for the book, I interviewed people. I asked, what are, what's in these impurities exactly? And why do you call it inedible? Because the crude oil is considered inedible. And they told me there's toxins in there. That's why it's inedible. One of the last refining steps called bleaching creates trans fats, which are also toxic. And it creates a lot of them. And a lot of them are up as high as 5% trans fat in the body. Model. 
How do the hateful eight seed oils harm our body? There are two parts to it. First, how toxins are generated when these oils are used for cooking, and second, what happens inside our body after we consume them. Before we talk about what happens in the body, we have to talk about what happens in the food. If there's any kind of cooking or heating that goes on, then the toxins in the bottle that you poured onto your food, just in trace amounts, they act like catalysts that go ahead and attack the polyunsaturates that hadn't been damaged, that are in the oil, as well as in your food. Right, and they don't just attack the polyunsaturates; they attack the proteins. It's very complex. It's a, it's a mess. By the time you've cooked, say something like a French fry or fried chicken, you have extraordinary concentrations of serious toxins that are similarly cell killing and carcinogenic to toxins in cigarette smoke. Once we eat them, well, every single tissue that comes in contact with the oils and the new toxins that formed from the food within the oil, they will damage your oral mucosa, your esophagus, mm. your gastric mucosa, your stomach, your entire intestinal tract. They will cause bloating. They will cause misery. They will cause people to think that they have all kinds of food intolerances because eating itself becomes painful because that they cause inflammation that doesn't go away 100% between meals. So your intestinal tract is dysfunctional. They make our body fat toxic because they reformulate our body fat with way more polyunsaturates than human body fat has ever had before the industrial era. Polyunsaturates are a type of fatty acid that reacts with oxygen, and they're the reason that I identified the hateful eight as problematic because it's the polyunsaturates that are the precursors to the toxins as they go through that factory refining. It's the polyunsaturates that deteriorate into the small amount of toxins that you know they have already as they leave the factory. And the polyunsaturates that remain will build up in our body fat. And in the context of depleted antioxidants, when those polyunsaturates get into our bloodstream or get into our mitochondria, that's where oxygen is in our body, in our bloodstream, in our mitochondria, very high concentrations there, then oxygen will attack those polyunsaturates and the same toxins will form in our bloodstream and in our mitochondria. This is why these oils change our metabolism in the way that I was discussing earlier, because it makes our body fat basically unpalatable for our cells. Now, let's talk about cancer, oxidative stress, and how vegetable seed oils tie it all together. Cancer starts in the mitochondria and it starts with the state of cellular imbalance called oxidative stress in the mitochondria. The vegetable oils powerfully promote oxidative stress and they powerfully damage the mitochondria. Just about every disease actually is known to be associated with oxidative stress. So cancer included, right? I'm 100% on board with the idea that um, cancer starts in mitochondria as mitochondrial stress. And since vegetable oils are the thing in the food supply that promotes more oxidative stress than anything else, getting them out of your diet is the most important thing that you can do to make yourself almost cancer-proof. If we keep our mitochondria healthy, we will not get cancer. Vegetable oil is basically oxidative stress in a bottle because of the way it affects our body. So oxidative stress, what is that? What scientists find as a root cause of every single type of disease anyone's ever looked at, including cancer, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, diabetes, obesity, asthma, on down the list, even acne, like bad acne, oxidative stress. So it's a very important driver of disease. So oxidative stress basically makes your cells unhealthy. Free radicals and high energy particles start flying around. Membranes start to polymerize instead of being fluid. Enzymes become oxidized and burnt, denatured and damaged. They won't function. Nothing in your cell can work right when there's a lot of oxidative stress going on. Vegetable oil is the most powerful promoter of oxidative stress. By now, it's clear why we need to stay away from industrial vegetable seed oils. But here's the real question. What does Dr. Shanahan recommend instead for a healthy long life? The traditional fats are produced by very gentle methods that don't require a lot of heat or pressure, certainly didn't require factories. First of all, olives have been cultivated for many thousands of years. They've been cultivated specifically to be used as a source of oil as well as a food. So that means they've been cultivated so that 
very primitive techniques will yield a good amount of oil. And that oil is edible and delicious immediately. Doesn't need refining. So that's true for peanut, olive, sesame, and a few others um, that are like minor things like flax and stuff. The virgin form of that oil is edible. Now you can take olive oil, like the mash, right? After you extract virgin olive oil, that's the first press, there's a mash left behind and that is the olives. Those olives still have a little bit of oil in them. And depending on the type and everything, it might be, you know, 50%, depending exactly which how it was extracted. The next press will not yield this extra virgin olive oil. It will yield a much lower grade and it will have require heat to extract it. So that's going to damage some of the fragile nutrients. That oil generally does need to be refined, you see, because the damaging, those are actually oxidation reactions that are occurring when these oils, fragile molecules are being damaged by heat or pressure. Again, it comes to oxidation. Oxidation will damage olive oil too, and it will need to be refined to make it edible. So that's why we have multiple grades and lower grades of olive oil are cheaper and nowhere near as good for you, okay? So, it's best to choose extra virgin, traditional oils. And when it comes to fighting oxidative stress, Dr. Shanahan says antioxidant supplements don't really help. Instead, we should focus on the following. We are refortifying our body's antioxidant enzymes. And to do that, we need to have plenty of protein. We need to have lots of minerals because every mineral that we need, whether it's copper, magnesium, zinc, iron, you name it, is also employed by some enzyme or other, some antioxidant enzyme or other, to fight oxidation. So we need all the minerals. I call them the four pillars of the human diet because they're common to every single traditional cuisine around the world. And they include the, the fresh food and the fermented and sprouted food and the meat on the bone and the organ meat. So